Last season, we moved to Eintracht Frankfurt in the Bundesliga, finished third in the league, and won the DFB Pokal, singling our first trophy in management. Now, with just under 30 million to spend, can we bring in players to keep us getting Champions League football, still challenging for the DFB Pokal, and becoming quite a good Champions League side? Well, let's find out. Well, as you can see, it's the 6th of September now. We've spent £83 million in the transfer window and got rid of £89 million worth of players. So are these players good enough for our first time in continental football as our manager Donato Ronchi? Well, the first player to join was Marquinhos, who, to be fair, was not me. This was done by the director of football during January last season when I was uh, holidaying through. Um, he comes in as an important player. I don't think he will be important, to be honest. To be honest, he's had two very successful seasons out on loan uh, past two years at Tarasasuna and Augsburg. He's hardly played for Arsenal. He's also played quite a lot for Fluminense and did well in 2024 and a bit average in 2023. Well, average rating wise, but got well on the goals and assists I'd say but hopefully he can be a very good player and if we sell him next season because he's unhappy with playing time hopefully we'll get about 60 million for him which getting him in on a free transfer ain't that bad a deal another player to join us on a free transfer was Callum Doyle now he was with Man City he's not been loaned out for well since the first season really uh, when he was at Norwich since then he's played a few times for Man City over the course of the four seasons um, but he's joined us on a free transfer 24 years old, £69,000 per week wages, nice um, if we can get £20 million for him in a year or two if he's not playing enough all the more better reason and he's a bit more better off because he's a squad player and so squad players are less likely to moan or Marquinhos, who's been guaranteed an important player role at the three-star vulnerability, he might very well get unhappy by January. Another player to join was Andreas Jungle, or Jungdal, uh, a Danish Singaporean player. Comes in from Real Salt Lake for 2.5 million. He was ever the goalkeeper. His minimum fee release clause was 2.5 million for a team in the continental competitions, and I thought he would be a decent decent backup for this season so we signed him 2.5 million pounds spent and if we sell him we'll probably get that profit but i think it'll be a decent backup for a few years now we also signed leonardo ventrelli who comes in as our main choice right back now i've he's accepted a breakthrough prospect because what he joined it was only two star but he's played four games so far and got 7.25 so it's Obviously, the coach is now rating better. I have to pay £26 million for him. It's a lot of money for, uh, what, a 19-year-old. But I want to play with youth. I never normally improve youth players. Like, I get good youth players, I sign them. And then because they're underperforming or because they're too start, I never play them. But because I'm holidaying, I'm able to lock them in. I'm not getting that choice about, oh yeah, this guy's not informing anymore. Well, I'm dropping him. Because what I'm all about playing players who are informed. We get £26 million from Genoa. All up front, I think, or maybe. No, not all up front. About £10 million or £13 million all up at the start. And then another £13 million in three years. Over the course of three years, I should say. Um, but he played five times last season for Genoa in Serie A. Sure, he did horrible, and I didn't even notice that, but with us, he's been brilliantly, so all the more reason to sign him, and he's really showing you how good he is. He's now worth close to 50 million, so if we can get 50 million for him one day, that'll be brilliant. Another player to join is Sebastian Winkler. Um, I just noticed how cheap he was, it was only £750,000 per week from Hoffenheim where he was playing regularly last season in the second side for them I thought okay £750,000 for him not that bad he's been loaned out to Clermont um, but he's been a half star accountability or potential I should say I always get that room mixed up but if he gets that 
three star, three and a half star potential ability as a current ability player would be an improvement. And so yeah, he signed for £750,000. We've also signed Giovanni Besto comes in as our right winger. Now he, now he joined as a two and a half star player, but he has also been in great form uh, after only playing four matches, getting one goal, three assists, one player on the match award, 7.72 average rating. We prized him away from Milan, where he played five times there last season. £30 million pound all up front, I think. That's not a bad deal. And he's already improved from 2.5 star to 3 star. And already got his first Italian cap while he's joined us. So he joined us, started off brilliantly and got his Italian cap and scored on his debut. So he is a really good prospect coming in from Milan. Then Dejan Vasilevic. Vasilevic. I do not know how you pronounce his name. Um, he comes in for 2.2 million from... Um, Savannah Zvedsta or Red Star I think uh, he's really been loaned out through Genoa and yeah he's hopefully going to improve there then we signed v Bart Verbruggen as our main choice goalkeeper and you might be wondering why have we done that but I'll get into that a bit later uh, but he didn't he was always playing for Brighton um, in the Premier League in the end, Ajax bought him for an extortionate amount, I would say, for a player who was just not playing for Brighton. And he was their regular goalkeeper, and now he's joined us for 30 million. I think rising to 34 million if he plays like 50 games. And the last player to join is Maximilian Hennig, who comes in as our left back. Comes in for 8.5 million pounds from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Well, past season he was playing for FC Paderborn on loan uh, he was originally from the Bayern youth team and as well as the Borussia Dortmund youth team so he's had four clubs in the space of like what since 2026 25 26 he's had four different clubs five if you count the Paderborn um, transfer so he's a, he's a mercenary almost like you could say but uh, he's a good player He's rising to 10.25 million, that originally spent at 8.5. Hopefully he'll be a good player. And we go to the outs. So first off, Faris Chibi or Chebby, um, he was not playing for me last season. He was unhappy. And in the end we've got a loan deal from Wolves, 1.8 pound 0.8 million pound loan deal. Um, with if we go here a mandatory future for 13.5 million pounds now i think that is not a bad offer and yeah he'll be joining wolves next season but he was not in my first team plans he was unhappy he didn't like me and so i just sold him and we also got some people who left at the course of their contracts ending such as Christina rivera who was on loan at nantes last season or nantes and hoffman who was uh also played at a Bit last season, he's gone on a free transfer to Paderborn, and Dama Ragic, who was in my first team plans, I'd add. Um, but before I could realise he was out of contract, um, Lil had signed him on a free transfer. It was alone loan last season at Alaves. In proper sales, um, Aurelio Buta was sold. He was just not playing at all last season, and just before the transfer window. Uh, opened uh, for us. We sold him to Charleroi for £975,000. He start, he joined them at the start of their transfer window. It was actually £850,000, but it rises to one million if he pays like 10 games. Um, well, he gets so much a month, so much per game for 10 games. And so he's nearly got to that one million already, which I don't think is that bad. We also sold Silka Thomas, who was not in the first team plans it was a pre-contract deal from last season before we joined he didn't play once last season he's been sold for six hundred thousand pounds to Heidenheim. i think that's a good deal for him and us and for Heidenheim as well nacho ferry who of course won us the dfb pokal last season he has been sold to bockham for 2.2 million pound i said i couldn't see a place in the team so we just sold him when we could get a profit and yeah, 2.2 million, it's not that bad. We also sold Muzambo, who I had higher hopes for, but he didn't play once last season for us. He was loaned out in the end in January to Huddersfield. 
and his coin ability just went down to two stars so yeah we were like okay he can be sold and Wolfsburg have bought him for 2.3 billion then Riddle Baku was sold I did not want to sell him 16.5 million pounds to Damak in Saudi Arabia now he had a year left on his contract and he said he was opting to keep his options open and all that stuff and so we I decided to sell him when in the summer instead of letting him probably go in six months time when his contract would run out and people could then sign him on the free I didn't want that to happen because I wouldn't be able to then sell him over the course of January because I'd be simming so 16.5 million pounds to Damak I don't think that's a bad deal uh, considering it is a profit from when we signed him when we went at the club uh, I'll take that the player who was loaned out was Elias Baum he could have been in my first team plans but in the end we just loaned him out to Herta we also loaned out another player as well in Upenque who just isn't good enough to play immediately for us then Amenda was also sold Oriel Amenda he was in my first team plans uh, you could say but last season he hardly was picked he was unhappy in January or December time so we loaned him out to Bristol City or put him on the loan list and this time Al Tai came in for £11 million which was over his value and yeah I think that is a good deal now I'm leaning rising to 11 it's already 11 because he's played one game which was like £2 million uh, he's already worth 20 but he's on much more wages than we were giving him so yeah good then our unfortunate sale is Stefano Tratti who last season joined us for £27.5 million from Sassuolo he did brilliantly well and that obviously caught Al Hilal's attention and they've paid £50 million for him and now he's in Saudi Arabia on £625,000 a week and that is the reason we got Bart Verbruggen <laughs> in the end I didn't want to sell him but £50 million for a player of his quality his valuation was 35 so it was £15 million over what his valuation was so you just had to retake it and we did and we're happy the place to be loaned out was Bolsat who last season joined us on his court it's gone down massively on his current ability he only played three times last season if he, even if he did do well but yeah Paderborn signed him on loan hopefully he'll get really good with them but I doubt he will now Francisco Jose was also loaned out I don't think his current ability is as high as it's could his potential I should say is as high as it's making out to be with the three and a half star current ability or potential ability oh it's getting mixed up um so I don't think he'll get to a three and a half star current ability I think the highest he can get is like two and a half star and I didn't want to lock him in this season so just loaned him out to her to hopefully he can prove me wrong and actually be quite good um, but yeah, uh, he's just been loaned out. Amia Oyuni was also sold, he was just a youngster. He's actually, he's already gone up in current ability and potential ability in terms of scouts, but in actual fact, his rating wasn't that high, so we just sold him uh, on the cheap to St. Pauli. Jovan Sofkovic, who's also gone down on the current ability, he joined us last year for what I now realise is an extortionate amount of four, more, million and 14 pound, million pound. Um, he went to Blackburn last season, this year he's gone to Cagliari in Summer B. Hopefully he can get to his potential ability or even higher but it's not looking good. I don't think we'll get any profit on him unfortunately. Berke Gilmans who was our left back who was in the second team. I noticed he's had another year left on his deal or something like that. And I noticed how bad he was. Like he's, in actual fact his mental techn technical and physical ain't that bad to be honest but his current ability wasn't the best his potential ability is not the best in the end we've took a profit of 1.1 million for him giving him selling him to Bochum so that's another player that signed for them we also learned that Sebastian Winkler like I said as well as uh, Vasilev Chick who are the two players that just recently joined us Simon Simone 
who was our third choice goalkeeper. Uh, well, fourth choice, in fact. Um, he came to me that he wanted to leave because of the interest shown in him because we originally rejected the bid. And then I had to accept £1.5 million from Brentford. And I think it's also can rise to 1.9 million if he plays one game. I don't think he'll ever get that game, but if he does, it's good. And finally, Tariq Buckman was loaned out. I couldn't sell him, so he's been loaned out to Lille. And so yeah, 83 million pound in, 89 million pound out. If we look at the finances now, we are 68 million pound in the overall balance. We've still in the end got 32 million pound to spend in the transfer budget, which good for January if the director of football wants to bring anybody in. If we look at the schedule, it started off brilliantly. The only problem is we lost, well, we were kind of thrashed in the Super Cup of, um, for the winner of the Bundesliga, which was Bayern, and the winner of the Day of the Pokal, which was us. So we don't get another trophy. We are into the second round of the Day of the Pokal, though, after beating a turn 8-0. And then in the Bundesliga, we've beat Bode Bremen, Hamburg, Augsburg and Borussia Dortmund. And currently, we sit top. 12 points out of the available 12 points in 4 games. So 4 wins, 0 losses, 0 draws. 15 goal difference. FC Bayern are the only team to also have a 100% record. Um, they've, got five, 10 goal, they've got 10 goal difference, however. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. And it's actually going really, really well. We're calling second, three points behind Bayern. And uh, we've all done the same, exact same as Bayern, apart from they've won an extra game and we've lost an extra game. It might even be against each other. Yeah, it's against each other. Probably lost 5-1 to Bayern. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, in terms of the Champions League, it looks like we're going to qualify. Three games to go. Two games to go. We've, 12, we've got 12 points. And the teams lower down here have only got six. So you can't guarantee all these six points team six point teams to get twelve points and um, overtake us. I think we've qualified for the next round of the Champions League at least. Whether it's the playoff round or the knockout phases, the actual knockout phases, I don't know. It also looks like we're in the quarter well, it doesn't look like we are in the quarter final playing against Kaiser So yeah, going well so far this tactic. Uh, the four two four positive ain't doing too badly. I finally figured out how to do the custom gig and press. If we go to the quickly show you the place where I have actually locked in, um, Ventrelli, who's already a three star now, Festo, who's a three and a half star, Marcus Blankenberg, who I don't think I've shown you before. He comes through our youth academy. He played one time last season, and I've locked him in for this season. And he's meant to be a midfielder. I'm playing him as a striker. Uh, but we've got some unhappy players. Ekitike, uh, who is our striker. Uh, he's unhappy, but I'm not really wanting to play him or lock him in if he hasn't scored any goals in 14 games. Kanyuzin, who I haven't locked in for this season, he's unhappy. He got 23 goals last year, and now he's only played six games and scored three. So he still scores, but he's not playing. Uh, might have to lock him in. David Martinez wants to play more. And of course, we've got Blankenberg wants a new contract. Wilfred Singo wants to start more games. And Duranva wants to leave to get better playing time. And Asp Benson wants to go on loan to Real Valladolid for help further his development. So we've got some unhappy players. Manager spots the quite good. And Clarence for his average. In terms of the past last few results, it's all been wins. Look off a loss that loss against Bayern. Had a bit of a poor run of form here, but other than that, it's just been win after win after win, with only one draw against Union Berlin. So I'm going to skip ahead now to the end of the season. Hopefully, we have surpassed Bayern, won that Bundesliga, and won the DFB Pokal. We are second Bundesliga for so, and our seventh Pokal after winning the sixth last year. Hopefully that will happen. So a quick look at what happened in the January transfer window for when the direct football had the full reins of being able to sign players and sell anyone who was transfer listed. So it looks like we loaned out Anna Caruso, who was a youngster, Schweighofer, uh, Schweighofer, Schweighofer. Uh, he was loaned out 
Then Julian Duranville was loaned out and I put him on the loan list because he was unhappy over his playing time. I thought he might be able to get more close to his potential because I know how good a player he can turn this game. Um, looks like he's not going to do that though. Um, we've also loaned out Franco and Ramming who are B team players. Uh, apparently we've signed all now Ortiz who I had put on the transfer list. He's been sold for £230,000 to Pogon in Poland. And then apparently people have joined. So on deadline day, and that sale was deadline day, but joining us on deadline day is Per Schurz. He comes in on loan from FC Bayern. Uh, he's played 14 times, not done too badly. £375,000 loan deal. Has he got an optional feature for it? Yes, he has, of £35 million. Um... I might trigger that, you know. I very might well trigger that. And another player that joined us, Ovi Stein Oskarsson. Who, to be honest, this guy, um, we were linked with in summer. And the director of football actually put a deal in to get him on loan. But I rejected it, thinking I didn't want a loan player. Apparently, the director of football has then gone in permanently and signed him for £6 million. Well, 5.25 million rising to 14 million. The cost so far is 6 million. Comes in on from Man City. Wait, he hasn't played that many. He's played quite a lot of times for Man City, to be fair. And not done too badly. So he must be a really good player. I didn't notice that last time. He was with Real Sociedad before joining Man City at the start of the game. And then he's gone to Cole, where he didn't play one game. Um, then been loaned to Southampton, where he was quite good with his goal tally and yeah uh, hopefully he'll be a good addition for next season but where did we finish this season we finished fourth we actually went down from second to fourth and Stuttgart Stuttgart won the Bundesliga wow their sixth Bundesliga of all time now I know Stuttgart are a really good side in this game they're expected to finish fourth and uh, Ties Jezil has got them a trophy who he started off as El Ali manager and, I was, and then he went to Cole and I always got Stuttgart. So he's a good manager. He's now he's now four and a half star reputation. What are we by the way after winning the Paco? Full star. Uh, I also noticed that we were runners up in the DFB Paco, so yeah. Um very nearly two in a row. Oh we lost in next time to buy a Leverkusen. Ah, oh, 93rd minute equaliser and then they went and scored in the 98th and won it an extra time ah oh, we let we lost it last minute oh that is disappointing we could have won two buckles in a row but no by leverkusen or should i say by never losing have won it and yeah um season ends with us and it's still successful well don't get me wrong fourth place when the team that's expected to finish sixth is not that bad especially if you look that would be in Dortmund and Leipzig, who are much better teams than us. At least I think they are on paper, at least they are reputation wise. Yeah, they're both better than us on paper, and both better than us in reputation wise, so we've done better than them. We've got Champions League football again, we we're runners up in the DFB Pokal. Champions League, we we're knocked out in the round of 16 to Manchester City, so did we actually get through to the. No, we were in the playoff round, and in the playoff round, we beat, beat Valencia 6 1 in aggregate before losing 4 6. Well, 6 4 in aggregate to Man City. Not that bad of a show. In the end, where did Man City end up? They were knocked out by Bayern, Bayern were knocked out by Arsenal, and Arsenal have to play Real Madrid. We've also got the FIFA Club World Cup. I don't know how we qualified for that, because the hosts is the R Germany. That is why. But yeah, if we go to more of the ratings, apparently our top goal scorer is Abel Vries with 20, worth 54 to 69 million he has wanted. Rumoured interest from Al Halal. So we'll have to have a lot of backing to keep him at the club for next season, I would assume, if their interest goes to active. Um, most assists was Festa, so he's turned out to be a good signing. Scherz got the most free kick goals with two, even though he joined us halfway through the season on the loan, he's already got two free kick goals, that's not bad. Inceptions per 90 minutes was Nathaniel Brown, and he was also third on tackles per 90 minutes. 
Now in terms of team overview, we got the most goals. Um, sixth most clean sheets with 11. And third most shots for, which we always end up doing well with them, with that. Uh, with third, and behind Stuttgart and Bayern. And then fourth and points per game. But obviously, that's the experiment because we finished fourth. In the last few results of the season, it didn't go well. After after we left, after I started Simon, I mean, uh, again, in, uh, after the what Stuttgart game, uh, we went on a bit of a bad run, run of form. Still, it's not bad, and it's still got its fourth, but if we'd have turned Hoffenheim into a win, Augsburg into a win or a draw, if we would have turned Holstein Kiel into a win, as well as Wolfsburg, what well, that would have been 12 points. Still wouldn't have been enough to have beat Stuttgart, but it would have got second. So, unfortunately, yeah, uh, we, as you can see, we tailed down all across the rest of the season. So, uh, first at one point, second at most points, third, then down to fourth. If we go to the best players though, uh, most paid players with a Bruggen with 53, Vesta played 51, Ventrelli played 50, uh, Ventrelli still not got an Italian cap, Vesta in the end has got um, just one and one goal still. In terms of goals, Abel really has got 28 in all competitions, Blankenberg got 18, Vesta got 15, um, Zivkovic didn't do too badly on loan, Larson got 10, 11 assists, TK got 8 goals, Skiri got 7, Gill got 7, Martinez got 5, and Ventuelli got 4 off from the right back slot. Then in terms of assists, Vesta got 17, Brian Gill got 17, Ventuelli got 11 alongside Hugo Larson. And Nathaniel Brown got seven, Abouris got seven, Skiri got six, Martinez Blankenburg got five, and then, and then TK got four. In terms of clean sheets, the only goalkeeper I think who played was actually Vought Verbrugge, and he got all 14, obviously. Uh, and the only ones with a, above seven, which a bit low to be fair, is Fester, Larson, Gill, Rees, Brown. Charlie Crew got over a seven. I didn't lock him in this season, and I wanted to see how he played out. He didn't do too badly, but he didn't play enough games. I think his potential has now been halted because of that, or his growth has been halted. So maybe next season will be a loan for him. And then Scherz did really well. So I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna try and get Scherz in for 35 million pound. Um, I doubt we can actually I'll go for that. He says he's worth at 33. So if we go for 33, we might be able to sign him. But yeah, I still would say it's a successful season this year. We got Champions League football when we weren't expecting it. We are expecting Conference League or Europa League. We got to the final of the DFB Pokal again, but lost out through an injury time goal and the extra time, so it's not that bad a loss. So next year we can definitely improve. We've been given, let's see how much we've been given. We've been given 54 million pounds to spend. That is much better than last year. And if we can spend at least all of that and maybe sell a few more players and get more money in, I think we'll be well off for uh, next season. But yeah, that is the end of this episode. If you have enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more FM24 videos. Not long now until FM24 is out. Uh, as I'm recording this, it was only just announced when the game will come out on November 26th of the day. So if you're excited for this game, I know I am. I want to. I'm really excited for the women's game and see how it comes into it. I'm a big fan of the women's game. I think it's more pure way of playing football compared to the men's game, which you just have so many cheating and lack of sportsmanship in it nowadays. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in FM25 content coming to the channel, which will be, I'll be doing rebuilds come FM25. Depending if there's a beta, I might do what I'm doing now with this season but in Dobby K women or Dobby K men if not I'll do and it comes out and the game comes out without a beta because I don't know if there is even a beta yet from what I know I don't think there is but if there is a beta there'll be season review episodes of Derby. if there isn't there'll be a rebuild with Derby as soon as the game comes out at least as soon as I can finish 
five or ten seasons or whatever. So if any of that interests you, yeah, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for push notifications, you never miss when I upload. Check out all my socials down in the description below, as well as maybe come and join in the Discord where you can come say hi to me and a few other people and come join the growing Hex community on the Hex Dimensions server. Anyway, I've been Matthew, also some Hex, and I'll see you all next time. Hex signing out. Bye everybody.